It's your boy Rara, man. It's Rare, R A E to motherfucking D, and uh, it's cryptic. I agree, bro, but it's the caterpillar. I'm the fucking caterpillar, the batterpillar, the rapper thriller. Rapper thriller, caterpillar, man. I'm still under pack of filler, trapper filler. Fuck Dracula, I'm spectacular, man. <laughs> Come at you, blue Dracula. Call me the caterpillar. <laughs>It was no secret, man. It's all over the net. Like, I was trafficking ecstasy for three year period. They busted me for the best batch I ever had of ecstasy. At the time, I had a batch of uh, were Mickey Mouse. It was large, pure MD pills, man. They get you off your fucking head, man. The majority of the online discussion of Rayad's work is negative, something which he says is due to the interference of jealous rival rappers in the USA. Raid believes these haters are actually a sign of his success. But with so little positive feedback, it's easy to imagine that people may be drawn to his music and videos for reasons that he can't entirely see. Raid wants to be taken seriously, but is his fame the product of unintentional humour? It's a good thing, man. Uh, bro, that's a, it's a really good thing to have haters. Because that's when you know you're doing something right. Raid's ambitions extend beyond just music. He wrote, directed, and funded his own feature film, titled Still Flowin', a fictionalised version of his own life. It tells the story of a rapper trying to make it to the top while fighting a government and music industry conspiracy to stop him from succeeding. Say my fucking name, man. Raid. Not good enough, man. Raid. R-A-E-D. What? R-A-E-D. The motherfucking D, man. The motherfucking D. R-A-E to the motherfucking D. R-A-E to the motherfucking D. R-A-E to the motherfucking D. R-A-D to the motherfucking D. Raid has spent a considerable amount of his own time and money on the film, although he refused to disclose the exact costs. The movie's still got twenty thousand dollars owing, maybe twenty twenty five maximum. How, how much did the film cost? A uh, secret, man. That's uh, it's above one hundred thousand. That's a secret. I can't tell you, man. <laughs> you sometimes see dolphins out here. Really? They do. Seriously, they come out sometimes. I've seen one once. Just one. Just once. She was looking for something. Maybe some food? Probably. <laughs> I'm surprised. Maybe she was looking for a soulmate. This boy's being good to you, good to you. You know what's being really good to you, good to you. But you be mean to me. You really be mean to me, mean to me. Raid has gone it alone, but he has tried in the past to connect with industry professionals to disastrous results. In 2001, he had a restraining order taken out against him by Michael Gadinsky, founder of Mushroom Records. But why? Raid says he personally delivered a box to Gadinsky's office. Apparently, its contents were enough to scare Gadinsky and his colleagues into taking legal action. We tried to contact Mr. Gadinsky for comment, but we didn't hear back. Yeah, what else was in the box? The video and the CD. The video is quite uh, entertaining, man. What was on the video? Entertainment, man. What? I don't know what is what, but we know what is what. What the fuck? <laughs> we just struck. <laughs> goosebumps. What was on that? Goosebumps. What was on the video? What a goosebumps. <laughs> it caused him that fucking goosebumps, man. I didn't plan on the front page. I didn't think about the front page. I wasn't thinking media. I wasn't thinking fame. I was thinking a record deal. Kadinsky knows it's like um, a freak when he sees one. I'm sitting on the edge of bed, you go like a candle, bitch. How you gonna handle this when I'm gone for good? Fuck the world, take a look around you, man. I don't need this shit, I'm leaving soon. And what you gonna do now, girl, so you can try and get me back into your world? Back into your 2001 world. wasn't the best year for Ayad. Angry that his name had appeared on the front page of a Melbourne newspaper in relation to Mr. Gadinsky's restraining order, he called in a bomb threat while he was at Melbourne's Crown Casino and gave an impromptu three-hour rap performance to negotiators and the bomb squad. His only discernible demand was to be given a hot chocolate. Yeah, what are your demands? And like, I want a hot chocolate. When it became clear that the situation was a hoax, Rayad was sedated and taken to a psychiatric clinic for evaluation. 
drop the freestyle to the fucking bomb squad, you know, entertain the bomb squad, you know, you gotta entertain these people, man. Some of Raid's videos have achieved the kind of success a lot of musicians would envy. A number of his music videos on YouTube have each managed to draw more than 100,000 views. Take a look at this guy's YouTube hits. Now he's original, and that's exactly what we need. This guy's shit's gonna go off here. Somebody find him for me! I've this guy before. Yeah, he like freestyled on an answering machine a while ago. His style's like really crazy, like intense, yeah? Most offensive artist of all time, 2011. Most offensive. It's better, man. It's better than being a gangster. No other artist from Australia has done that, man. I mean, the listing is Mystical, 3 Six Mafia, Villa Ice. You, know, you get the big fucking names in there, bro. Jay Z is in the house with the fucking. How they come up that gets so big? Dude, I was uh, 13, 14 years old uh, when my older brother passed away on heroin. He ended up ODing. Dealing with that at the age of 13, 14, and, uh, you know, his dad tries to pop a lot of pills, commit suicide once or twice. These little things, man, become big things, and these big things become your life. And it's a struggle, they call it. Dealing with it is unexplainable, man. And then you're with your father, then he passes away within the same four, four or five year period. That's a, it's a different struggle completely. Because he's your, he's your best friend, man. So like, these two deaths in the family would uh, put you on a different level. The latest track on the Cool Freaky, the Cool Freaky album, there's a track, it's called Imagine That. Um, I, bought, I bought some methylated not methylated spirits, what do they call them? Crystal meth. And um, I smoked an eight ball, minus four points, probably like 28 points or something like that. I was up for like seven days. Ray had dreams that his music will one day achieve the critical and commercial success he craves in the US market. It would seem that the odds aren't in his favor, but Raid remains hopeful, positive, and very, very confident. <laughs> Yeah, I guess the rhythm actually saved my life, man. Like, I don't think I'd be on this planet if it wasn't for rhythm. Because, like, it keeps you balanced. And they said we never flow like this, but we've come this far. Now they say, how the fuck you flow like this and come this far? She flows like this, she, he must be a star. Rockin' like this, how the fuck you come so far?